Uh, higher education diversity policies are in the spotlight as college presidents from Harvard, MIT, and Penn facing a big backlash for their tepid response to heated rhetoric on campus. Uh, so the question, are DEI and free speech on a collision course in elite education? John Fort is here to weigh in on all sides of the issue. John, what do you think? Yeah, Andrew, diversity policy and free speech are on a collision course, and it's because of hypocrisy. Diversity policy started with great intentions back in the 70s and 80s, post-civil rights movement. It became clear that legal desegregation alone couldn't change the complexion of our social institutions, even schools. So high schools tried busing and then magnet programs. Colleges, meanwhile, rethought admissions. The nation began this uncomfortable but necessary process where more minorities showed up on campus, went through massive culture shock, and then many times left before finishing. The hard truth was it wasn't enough for schools to simply admit these promising minorities to these pressure cooker, socially alien environments. But in response, too many schools decided to game the system. To make campuses more welcoming, they manufactured a diversity, equity, and inclusion industrial complex. The DEI machine mandated safe spaces, policed speech, and today, with emotions boiling over during this latest war in the Middle East, the hypocrisy is exposed. The same schools that suppressed speech to try to protect one group of minority students is now waving a free speech banner to justify vile rhetoric against Jewish students. It just doesn't work, Andrew. Okay. Uh, so then the question is, are college DI efforts really the problem, or did some schools just do it wrong? Well, Andrew, on the other hand, Sensible DEI leadership is probably the only way free speech can thrive on college campuses today. Healthy campuses have to be communities, not just lecture spaces and arenas for rhetorical gladiators. Students have to live together before they can productively disagree and learn from each other. At its root, that's the promise of DEI done right, helping a community understand its differences, commit to fair treatment of good faith people and ideas, and pursue shared values that move society forward. It's essential that we have college campuses where students can openly argue against the constitutionality of affirmative action policies, or the appropriateness of transgender athletes competing in women's sports, and also argue about the impact of higher interest rates on poor communities and the ethics of bombing thousands of women and children in Gaza to death. The beauty of the elite American college experience must be that it equips students with academic rigor and cultural competence at such a high level that our desk workers and diplomats can perform on a global stage with no safe spaces. America needs students who can dismantle what they see as bad ideas without threatening the people who happen to disagree, Andrew. Okay, but people are, are pretty worked up about this, John. And, and here's my question to you, because I just heard you sort of walk through a, a lot of different things in, in that sort of second argument that you made. And let's go, go very controversial. To me, and this is just me, saying genocide to Jews on one hand is abhorrent and free speech or not, to me, if you, if you say that kind of stuff, you shouldn't be on a campus, you shouldn't be at one of these schools, period. Uh, just as if you said genocide to any, uh, any group, uh, a, a minority or otherwise, frankly. On the other side, I think there's a completely valid, frankly, even an argument, uh, you may or just may not agree with it, but you, you could argue the policies of how Israel is going about this war uh, and, and, and those things could be distinct. But the question is, in a free speech, you know, in a completely free speech, every, any, are we in a anything goes speech or are we in some kind of, is there some middle ground? Andrew, I agree with you. Uh, I, and I think that's where the community part comes in. When you're living in a family, in a community with people that's healthy, there, there's language that you don't employ. But I remember this from when I was in college, kind of pre-web, there were these message boards on the VAX system. When you're just dealing with people at arm's length in text, you end up saying all kinds of vile things. And we experience this today in message boards and you know, in, in text chats sometimes. Part of what this digitally driven AI now society is doing is putting us more at arm's length from each other even in a way when we're face to face. And I think part of what the campus experience, the residential college experience can and should do is train us to be able to civilly and productively engage with each other face to face. I think that kind of has to be the strength of America versus other societies if we can train ourselves and the next generation to do that.